The date is Friday the 5th of March 2021 and we've just been to see Brother open the house. Okay, hi there. Um, now, Vicky was unable to come to uh, see the show, so I am very pleased to say that I am joined by the amazing, wonderful, and brilliant Helen Reed. Hi, Helen. Hi, Amy. You all right? Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you very much for coming on the show. No worries. <laughs> so, we're going to do a little bit of a disclaimer at the start. You are a little bit connected to this uh, production, aren't you? Just a little, yeah. In what way? Um, as a book writer is my daughter, Annabelle. Annabelle so Matali reed Annabelle Matali reed Wow. And, uh, yes, and uh, I had the pleasure of teaching her when she was only a little child. So, um, wow, she has gone on to great things. Um, uh, this is her, is this her second or third musical that she's written? Um, she's written a number of musicals. This is the second one that's gone into production. Yeah. Um, to speak. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of, of information about it before we get onto it. So, um, it was written by, um, now, apologies if I get the name wrong, Robin Simeos de Silva. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Sounds about right. Brilliant. I get, I, whenever I do this bit, I always get the pronunciation wrong. Don't worry. Um, and Annabelle Matali Reed. It was directed by Tom Jackson Greaves. Greaves, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Musical director, uh, Jack Trinsinski. <laughs> Good try. Uh, Trinsky. There we go. Uh, lighting Zoe Spur. Um, and our actors were Melanie Laban, Georgina Lloyd Owen, Sam Peggs, and Robin Simeos de Silva. And it was at the Southwark Playhouse. Um, and it's, uh, it was 90 minutes with no interval. And it was, this was brilliant because it was a live theatrical performance, but also able, um, uh, um, available um, over Zoom and the internet because of the lockdown, mm. um, which, um, which was great, really. Um, okay, so, first thoughts. What did you, th what do you think of it? Well, as a piece of art, I love it, obviously. Um, Whenever I go to see anything that my daughter's involved in, I go in with a certain sense of um, anxiety that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, but I did see the workshop of it last a year ago at, at the Turbine Theatre um, and loved it then and loved it now. I think it's a lovely, warm, charming story, family. Um, oh, it was, it, now. It's such a refreshing musical to watch. And um, it reminded me that um, on the sense of Caroline or Change. I don't know if you saw that. Um, no. uh, but um, it's a, quite a small set, um, only four actors. Um, and everything, it, it, so it's not overly played. Um, that, you know, um, that there's just enough set to create the illusion of this house. So we should say it's it's based in um, um, St. Ives mm -hmm. and it focuses around a family whose um, um, the mother is um, an artist and it looks at loss, but also um, the the protagonist um, is um, a, a somebody who's gone um, through transgender. Um, and though those two kind of themes run throughout the musical but they're not overplayed and they're subtly brought in throughout um the story so you don't feel at any point that it's kind of run down your throat or you know it's like this is what we're talking about bang 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 it's 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 just i i love the it's kind of i when i say gentle it, i don't want it to sound disparaging it's it, it just gently takes you along on the ride well, I think it's just subtly bringing in, in you know, family dynamics, isn't it? Every family have a, has a different dynamic. And I think that was the charming thing for me about it, is it was just family. Yeah. Um, and and yep. just just talking about the actors as well. I mean, wow, they they really found some talent there. Um, um, the four actors, not 
not only were they um, performing, um, acting and singing, obviously, um, mm. the three of them also played the, inst um, the, the instruments as yes. well. Right, all phenomenal musicians, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, they must have been exhausted at the end of it because they just didn't stop. If they, you know, if they weren't on stage, because everybody stayed on stage virtually the whole time as well, uh, which yeah. I, which I liked. Um, uh, but uh, so I might say that Robin wrote the music for this, yeah. He wrote the music and lyrics, and Annabelle wrote the book and the script. Absolutely. So let's just talk a little bit about the music. What did you, what do you think of it? I thought there was some really. Um, wonderful um songs that just stayed in my in my mind for quite a long time afterwards a couple of songs and one of i keep forgetting the name of it but particularly i just kept singing it over and over ahead yeah, um, yeah, yeah i agree it's, i mean the, the songs aren't we're not talking about lloyd webb here are we it's not like big massive show tunes however um i absolutely agree there's one song where the lyrics are so quick I agree. Two or three of the songs are really standout numbers, and they kind of stuck in your mind. But I was thinking, I really, I really like to have the um, CD. I, you know, it's mm. they're good, they're good songs to listen they are to. Very good songs, and I think it, it. Yes, you haven't got the sort of massive show showstoppers, maybe, but you've got songs that tell tell the story, and they're pertinent to the story. Yeah, because and I kind of disagree with that because um, I think um, I think the, I think the song "Brother." I, I don't know if it's called "Brother," but the one at the end that was that, that, I thought that was a bit of a showstopper myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, so your daughter um, wrote the story. Um, wrote the story. Wrote the book. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's fair to ask what you think of it. So I'm going to say what I th I thought of it. Again, mm -hmm. it's it's that kind of subtlety, really. Um, it it really kept my interest. There was it, there is a mystery in the in what's going on and what's happened. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but it is kind of edges your seat stuff and. Mm -hmm. I think she she has that smoking gun throughout. You know, she there's a there's a bit all about a stained glass window, and mm. you know, and you're wondering why, and you find out that the window's broken, but you don't know why. And and what I really liked it, is that all the things that were kind of pl um, placed at the start were all explained. So, for example, there's the typewriter becomes very important, and it's mentioned throughout, and uh, it becomes yeah. a big point at the end. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent stuff. What about um, lighting, special effects? How do you think they uh, created? Uh, do you think they created the world well? I actually thought the lighting was was really great. Yeah, um, me too. At certain points, especially Cassie, the mum. Um, I mean, she's such a phenomenal performer and actor. Yes, a standout performer. Absolutely brilliant. And I mean, she's she's a very, very, very well established, experienced um, actor. And mm. I just thought some of the lighting on on her moods. Um, yeah. And her sort of different parts of the story and when she was you know coming back as you know maybe when they're sort of telling the story in the past i agree she's she, she's a very strong performer and what she was able to do she kind of had a command over the stage without pulling focus mm. uh you know there was so much subtlety in what she was doing but it was such a strong performance from her i could take i couldn't take my eyes off her but not taken away from um mm. the other three actually um i mean robin has a phenomenal voice uh, but again, they 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 all do, and I thought um, the brother also um, exceptional. And I did like the characterization of um, I can't remember which the name of the character she played, but she played kind of an art podcaster. Mm -hmm. And we know how arrogant podcasters can be. You know, I really warmed to her by the by the uh, by the uh, by the end of it. Um, anything that you didn't like? Wouldn't be about the story. Um, it would be more about the pace of it because I think what was lacking was the live audience. Um, mm. And having seen it in its first iteration, it the pace you got the more the warmth and more of the humour came out. With I think with the pace of it being live but without a actual live audience, I think the the pace was slightly different. Yeah, I'd certainly like to go and see it again. Mm. Uh, um, just um, I, I just also though want to mention um, the the work they did capturing it and filming it. Mm. Um, I, that, I thought that because it was a live performance, yeah, uh, which was good. So it wasn't there wasn't any pre recorded So no. um, the the camera work was great. Um, the thing with the theatre is you don't you want to choose where you're looking really, don't you? And, and unfortunately with film, it's more directed. But I thought they did that really well, and uh, you know they were able to capture some of the close ups and all that kind of stuff. But um, that, I think because the set of the stage was quite was quite a small 
set really it was able to get you were able to um you know get it all in there without it being lost in tiny which could happen mm. sometimes on the screen no i just sort of think in terms of the movement on the stage i think that would have been different had it been with a live audience yeah. and i think it could have been on that well i think you'll be will be on the front row when this uh comes back when the theaters are open because it certainly isn't going to go away after this show absolutely all right so we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and score it <laughs> So how are you doing in lockdown, Helen? How are you filling the void? What are you doing? Oh, um, spending lots of time with my beautiful granddaughter. And yeah. My beautiful daughter. <laughs> so which is good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, are um, you looking forward to get, get back into the theatre when, the, when they're open? So much so, yeah. I think it's, it's one of the things that so many people have missed and I think has been very undervalued throughout lockdown. It's really has, important. yeah. Yeah, really yeah. think about it. And, and, and hats off to Annabelle and her crew for um, doing this. Um, mm. You know, it, I, didn't, I can't say enough. It, because I've seen a few um, recorded um, theatre performances, and I've, I've had quite we've had quite a mixed reaction for them. Some have been awful, and some have been very good. But this watching it live really mm. made a difference for me. All right, so we're going to score it. Um, this is going to be very tough <laughs> for you, but try to be as impartial as you can. Um, but, um, we, um, it's all out of ten. So, performances. What are you going to give it out of 10? <laughs> ten. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, it gets a nine for me. Um, staging and technical, I am going to give it a nine. I'll go nine as well. Okay, good stuff. Okay, narrative and plot. <laughs> right. You are, yeah, you are, we would both be in absolute trouble if we didn't both give that one 10. Um, originality. Oh. Well, I think it's quite an original story. Yeah, I've been um, it. It's really original. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I hadn't, I ha haven't seen this issue done like this before. Um, and, and, and I know we didn't talk a lot about where it's located, but that's really important that, mm -hmm. that this house um, um, in, in St. Ives, and, and it's based on a place that you go to, isn't it? It is. It's based on a house that we, um, it's, a, it's a house that we visit, and it's a, it's a friend of my aunt who owns this beautiful house overlooking the bay and overlooking all the places that were mentioned and it has a stained glass window so um, you get, you, but that's the nice thing you really get a feeling of this house and and how it works because you know i i imagine i don't know if i'm wrong but this artist studio was at the top of the house at the very you know um mm -hmm. and you know at the very top is this stained glass window but then outside is the sea and you know there's a whole bit where they're talking about getting um cream teas um, huge scones and all this kind of, and you know, you're you're there. You're mm. you know, it, it's brilliant. So ten for me for originality. Mm. I take it. Yeah. Yep. Costumes. I give it a nine. Yeah. <laughs> it was under you know costumes. His clothes really weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, music. Again, ten. Good stuff. I'm going to give it a nine. Um, because some of the songs for me weren't. Um, well, weren't quite as strong as the other ones, but I'm not taken away for how brilliant it was, and the performances were brilliant. And um, was it? Orchestrations were fab as well. Say again. Orchestrations were fab. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And was it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> how many out of ten? Ten. Yeah, it gets a ten. And I'd pay more to see it. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to add up these scores. Okay, so it gets a, a star rating of 4.79, which is incredibly high because uh, it's out of a five star rating. So 4.79 is amazing. And surprisingly, it puts it on our 2021 leaderboard right at the top. Um, but we haven't been seeing anything else. So, uh, <laughs> Helen, have you enjoyed being on the show? Well, it's, uh, it's different, it's certainly different. <laughs> I know you're a little bit nervous, but thank you so much. And as you can hear, that is the theatre bell, which means we are out of time. So the curtain's down, the theatre's dark, and that was 15 Minute Theatre. Good night. Good night. <laughs>
If you're brave enough to have your theatre production reviewed, please contact us at 15minutetheatre at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter and please rate and review us on iTunes. Thanks for listening.